Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'm going to show you the new things that we've added in Camera Bag 2023.4. Um, and we've got some great things for you here. And this pop up uh, that you'll see when you first open it um, explains in brief what we've got. And it just says, New in this version of Camera Bag, check out the new toolkit section in your presets tab and the new notes tile in the utility section of the adjustment tab. And I'll walk you through this this new section of presets that we've made, which is really neat, called Toolkits. And you'll see why it's called that. Um, another big thing for Mac users is we've added native ARM support for newer Macs. So that's the M1, M2, and all the variants of those processors that have been in Macs for the past um, couple of years. And uh, so this is you know, it could run, camera back could run on those before, but now it's got native support, so that offers even more speed improvements than what we've been uh, putting in, in the past couple months. And then for video users uh, who use the uh, RED cameras, we've got improved R3D support um, if you have Camera Bag Pro. So that makes those videos uh, load and run much faster, and uh, it's more compatible with ones from different cameras. So, um, let me show you. Now, what's going on with these toolkits? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So these basically, the, the concept behind these are, um, these are sort of presets that uh, have things set up to accomplish a certain task or a certain look. So for example, this black and white conversion one. So, um, and as, as it mentioned in that pop-up text, each of these has a notes uh, tile right here that you can click on that explains what this is for and how to use it. And so if I pop up the, uh, let's say the portrait curves one, you can see it's got a different set of adjustments here and notes that explain what each of these do. So let's go back to that black and white conversion one. So this is a, a toolkit to use on any photo to convert it to black and white. And um, Let's take a look at the notes. So it says, um, it starts explaining this. So you can see the only thing that's enabled here so far is the auto exposure. And these other ones are disabled. It says the auto exposure adjustment converts the image to black and white since its method is set to B and W. You can use its amount slider to adjust the strength of the auto exposure effect. So sort of the first step in this black and white conversion is this auto exposure. And this will convert it to black and white. Um, with auto exposure, we've got a color-based method and a black and white-based method. So if I turn this all the way down, then the auto exposure itself has no effect, but it's just um, converting it to black and white. And I can dial up the auto exposure. So this is sort of your first step in converting any photo to black and white, is just find how much of this auto exposure effect do you like, and that will convert it to black and white for you. All right. So then it says, if you wanted to make certain hue ranges, like skin tones leave the sky brighter or darker, relative to other hues, move nodes up and down in the hue region curve in the hue exposure adjustment. So this basically lets you uh, do things that you would do with like a, a, a color filter on a, a film camera. So like if I adjust this curve in this hue exposure up and down in the sort of skin tones range. You can see how it affects brightness and darkness of skin tones. Uh, green will get like leaves. Blue over here will get sky, which is mostly down and reflected in the water. Um, so that's another sort of uh, critical useful step. You won't need it for every photo um, that you're black, doing a black and white conversion, but that can be a handy feature to, uh, to have included there. All right. Next, the Gamma Curve tool is a great tool for adjusting contrast, exposure, shadows, and highlights all with one curve. Try moving its existing nodes or click to add more nodes in the middle for more control. Its amount slider is set to 50% by default to make their adjustment easier. So this uh, Gamma Curve is pre-set up um, specifically for um, this, this particular preset. These nodes have been added already. And um, you can see adjusting one on the left makes it nice and easy to adjust the level of your shadows. And adjusting the one on the right lets you easily tweak your highlights. And because this is already turned down to 50%, um, its effects are, are moderated. So if this is up at 100% and I do this, then it's quite big changes with even a little movement of this. 
um, node, but set down at 50%, it makes each of these have a more subtle effect. And 50% uh, is about what we found usually is is great sort of compromise between being able to get a you know large effect, but also being able to have plenty of movement to subtly tune in exactly what you're looking for. All right, returning to our notes. Um, finally, the grain adjustments adjustment can be enabled to add beautiful natural film grain that often looks so good in black and white images. Play with its amount, scale, and uniformity to get just the right look. You'll want to look at your image at 100% zoom to accurately see how the grain looks at full resolution. So, um, we'll double click to get into 100% and turn on grain and um, you know, just play with it to see how you like it or maybe you don't want it on there. Um, but each of these sliders just gives a slightly different look for it. And I prefer this photo without it, frankly. So um, anyway, that's an example of the black and white conversion one. And I won't go through all of these, but um, like a basics one is just, you know, sort of the basics that you would set up for any photo. Um, and it's, you know, things that you would likely do uh, just when you load any photo in camera bag, if you're just doing a standard edit, but this sort of preloads all those adjustments for you, set to neutral values, and uh, the notes explain that. So um, something like false autumn is pretty fun. Um, this has a HSV mask that's set to um, screen for leaves and stuff, and then the coloring curve that, uh, or not a curve, just the coloring adjustment that uh, turns those orange. And, you know, um, in the notes, it tells you other things that you can use it for. It's great for even existing fall photos. Um, and here's some interesting ones that I'll just talk about really quick, like Instagram products. So maybe you uh, do a lot of Instagram posts with, with a product or various products from your company. And this is just set up to, like, have your watermark. There's no watermark here, but you can load it in. Um, you can customize your text for your font. The idea with this one is that, and it explains this in the notes, is that you can tweak this and then um, just save it as your own preset by hitting uh, shift and plus. And um, then you can have it customized and it's set up for, you know, to, to do your whatever, however you want your text. You can put multiple different pieces of text on here or whatever. But it's a, a toolkit, a workflow for making those kind of posts. Or uh, this is the last one I'll show. It's a uh, one for um, podcast video, and so you can see it's got the text set up to be in the lower left. And the idea is, is if you have a um, audio file, let's go. As it explains in the notes, you can adjust the cropping on this by just going into the cropping tool. Um, but it gives the aspect ratio that video sites expect, and uh, if you have audio from like a podcast or something. This is to use the function where um, you go to create video using audio file from the file menu and then it will combine this photo and this text and your watermark and it will turn it into a video using that audio file. Uh, this is basically the, the static image um, for the whole video. So um, anyway, several, uh, like I say, super handy um, toolkit presets and we'll be expanding this more but um, I think you'll be surprised at how useful you find these and how often you'll want to turn to them um, and for people who don't know you know a lot about different looks or whatever the the notes in here can be really useful um, like this summer vibes one it's just you know this combines various effects it starts out with a basic sort of tinting of the shadows in a blue hue, but it talks about in, in the notes in this how, you know, a lens flare is something that you'll often find in a bright summary photo because there will be a bright, you know, source of light somewhere or a light leak. Um, and, you know, adjusting this brightness to give it a washed out look. And these are things that all would, um, you know, more likely occur with a real uh, film camera in a bright lighting situation like a summer shoot. And so that's why there are these things that, that end up making things look more summery. So um, we hope you'll enjoy this and uh, send us feedback in the comments in this video or using the, uh, the menu item in the help menu. And we'd love to hear what you think. 
We hope you love it. Thanks.